Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one, we're going to be creating a cooldown manager for your spells or your abilities or whatever it is in your game that you need to have cooldowns on. Um, normally, I mean, if you had like only two or three cooldowns in your whole game, for example, you might just do that internally. But if you have like, you know, like in my game, like 84 spells max, well, I will be making 84 spells. And then there'll be other cooldowns to take care of as well. This is a really good way, you know, to have a single manager that handles all your cooldowns that you can speak to and get from all the information. It's a good way to do it. So obviously, yeah, you can do it for abilities, spells, whatever you want. Uh, it's not just for RPGs, it's for basically any game, you know, that has cooldowns, which is most games. So we're gonna go and create a new manager. So uh, you can just do this on a blank script, uh, blank project, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm just using the one for the scriptable objects, but it's not important. So we're gonna say we want a um, like cooldown manager, for example, and that's just gonna sit on the managers. And we're gonna make it um, static. So there's only ever gonna be one cooldown manager, and we only you know ever want there to be one. So let's start off by making a static instance of it. So public static cooldown manager. Um, what to call it instance so we have an instance of the cooldown manager and that basically means we can refer to cooldown manager instance from anywhere and we get access to the script we don't need to find component or anything it's it's a uh, globally accessible because there's only ever going to be one so we know when we're referring to the class we want this specific one and we also want a list of uh spells that are going to be on cooldown but we don't actually have a spell yet so we'll make the spell class in a minute um for now we just want to make the standard um awake method for a singleton like an instance of a class we just want uh, if instance oops, yeah if instance is null so basically you know if the instance doesn't exist yet uh, then we're gonna say well we can be the instance so instance is this this version of the class or this instance of the class sorry and then if instance does exist but it's not uh, this so if instance is something else then destroy this because we already have it so we don't need this and then, as normal, you just have uh, don't destroy and load because you don't want uh, the script to go. When you go to a new scene, you want it to stay. So that's it. That's the standard setup for a uh, class that is a manager that persists. And for now, we'll leave that there. We're going to come back to this. We're going to make a new... Um, oh, I still have my other project open, but anyway. Uh, we're going to create a spell script, a uh, spell class. So we could make this a scriptable object. Um, a scriptable object would work for this. You would have to take into consideration that it changes. So like, uh, if you're gonna be changing any data on it, you don't want it to be, um, like if you just want, you could make a database of the spells uh, that you don't touch and change. So that's always got the, what a spell like is and cooldown and this, that, the other. But because we want to actually be changing the current cooldown of the spell, well, we'll just do it on a normal script, why not? So we'll make a class spell like so. Um, actually, no, we really should make it a scriptable object because then we can have, yeah, we'll make it a scriptable object, sorry. Um, so, I didn't open it. <laughs> Let's change this to derive from scriptable object. I'm also going to zoom in uh, to help those people who can't see for some reason. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I'm used to coding like this. but So we're going to make a scriptable object and we need to make it in the asset menu. So create asset menu. If you've done, if you watch my scriptable object tutorials, then this should be uh, quite... Uh, obvious to you what I'm doing here so we're going to say uh, spell and then we can also just put the menu name as a like you know spell why not just leave it like that um, new spell okay so in a spell what do you want well we want um, probably like information about the spell so um, it's like about this spell If you didn't already know these like attributes with the um, square brackets, like header and create asset menu, they don't necessarily get run as part of the script as such. This is just um, like having a header is where in the inspector on the side, like here, for example, you get headers like these um, instead of just the variables, you can have headers. So if I, well, I haven't finished making the script yet. I'll show you afterwards. Um, so header about the spell, we're gonna say, let's have a public string uh, spell name which is new spell I have a public uh, oops public string spell description and then 
whatever what else do we need right now like you can obviously add everything that you'll need but for the sake of this it's just cooldowns i mean i could always say like we want a public texture 2d um, and so on for like the sprite and whatever but let, let's just stick to um yeah like we'll make an enum why not this is the kind of date you'd want to store on a spell right um if we're going off my game for example like there's the element so um like you know fire water earth air arcane light dark and then we want a public element called element so basically we've created the enum and then we've got an instance of the enum so like maybe we'd want a different one we'd have public element blah blah, blah. we've created our own type basically um and then finally, we'll have just the um, cooldown of it. So we'll have header spell stats, for example. And we want a public flow uh, current cooldown equals zero. And then a public flow max cooldown. Okay, so that's all the data we're going to store on a spell for now. You can add whatever you need to, but this is just, you know, for us. So now that we've made that, we're just going to let it gonna let it load let it compile and we're gonna create a new spell and we're gonna call it fireball why not keep it simple so this is a fireball um can't be bothered changing the description to be honest icon whatever i'll just pick a stupid sprite it's fire current cooldown max cooldown so let's set the max cooldown to 10 why not and let's create another spell so spell um arcane missiles and that's gonna be called arcane missiles and it's gonna be arcane and you know cooldown could be five and we'll make one more why not spell we'll create um an earth spell called like um pillar give it a random icon make it earth max cooldown 20. so that's that this really doesn't matter i'm not going to be displaying it anyway but we've got our spells you put them in a separate folder whatever so now that we've created the spell class we can access it in our cooldown manager so what we want to do is we want to have a list of current spells on cooldown okay so we'll have, it, it can be a private list so um we'll keep it a private list private uh list of spell type spell and we're going to call it uh spells on cooldown and it's a new list of types spell and then what we basically need to do is we need to whenever we put a spell on cooldown we need to um, add it to here so we're going to write a function in here called like start cooldown so we want to have a public because it's um, accessible elsewhere void because it doesn't return anything we're going to call it uh, start cooldown we're going to take in a spell called spell so we need to run uh, call this function and pass in the spell that we want to start the cooldown with and before we write it we're going to go back to the spell and we want to write um, a function in here that we can refer to with the spell to put it on cooldown. So we'll say public void uh, put on cooldown. So basically, when we use the spell, we want to say like bloody blah spell dot put on cooldown. And what it'll do is we'll say cooldown manager dot instance. So remember we made the instance of it dot start cooldown, which is what we made. And we're going to pass in. We need to pass in a spell, which is this spell. So pass in this, like so. So when we call this function, we're going to pass in the spell to put it on cooldown, whichever one this is. Now, what do we actually do in the start cooldown? What do we need to do? We need to, first of all, say um, we only want to um, put it on cooldown if it's not already on cooldown. Just This is like a safety check, I guess, but uh, we should do that. So we're going to say um, if not, because we want to make sure it's not in the list, if not spells on cooldown, dot contains so obviously contains is a boolean it returns true if the list does contain the thing and false if it doesn't and we want it to return um false we want it to not be in there so that this gets this is true because two falses make it true so a spell we're going to pass in our spell so we're saying if the list doesn't contain our spell we're going to put it in the list basically so we're going to say uh spell dot cooldown is equal to spell dot max cooldown so regardless of what this, so the spell cooldown is going to be zero, we're going to set it to its max. So whatever the cooldown max is, you know, it's going to go up to the max cooldown. 
and then we want to add it to the list. So we're going to say spells on cooldown dot add, and we're going to pass in the spell now. Okay. And then we're going to have an update function, as you know, which gets called every frame. And we're going to, for all the spells in the list, we're going to decrement them by, by one a second, which is counting down. So for every spell that's on cooldown, we're going to count the spells down, basically. So we're going to say void update. And in the update function, we want to say, we want to loop for all the spells. So we're going to say for int i is equal to zero. i is less than spells on cooldown dot count. Whoops. I plus plus. So we're going to increment i while looping through all the things in the in the list, each frame. And we're going to say uh, spell on cooldown i dot current cooldown. Whoops. Dot current cooldown minus equals time dot delta time, which basically is uh, regardless of frame rate, this will reduce one per second. Uh, it basically because this will get run every frame. It calculates depending on missed frames or your. It calculates on your frame rate. Um, how much to decrement and it always works out as one per second so it keeps it uh, the time properly steady then we're going to say after decrementing it if the spell on cooldown that we're checking uh, so i if it's cooldown current cooldown is less than or equal to zero we could say equal to zero but the chances are pretty much every time it always goes a teeny bit below zero um, like as you're decrementing so you want to make sure it's just if it's less than or equal to then if it is that means we've done so we want to say spells on cooldown i dot cooldown, current cooldown is equal to zero just to reset it back to zero. And then we just want to say spells on cooldown dot remove, going to remove it from the list. And we want to remove spells on cooldown i, because that's the one that's finished. So we're going to say for every spell that's in the list, we're going to decrement them. And we're also going to check each frame if they're finished. And if they have finished with the cooldown, then we're going to reset it and remove them from the list. So this just actively removes everything in the list that's on cooldown. Um, oh, sorry, well, counts down until it's zero, then it removes it from the list, which is good. Um, so all we want now is we want to go back to our spell, and we want to just have a function in here, which is a helpful function. We're going to have a public boolean, because it's going to return true or false, called uh, spell ready, or like is spell ready or something. Like is spell ready. And all it's going to do is it's going to say if current cooldown is less than or equal to zero, return true uh, else return false so basically all this uh, cooldown thing does is handles it, it doesn't have to like call anything back saying yep we've done with the cooldown it's finished all it needs to do is just know um, this script needs to be able to put the spell on cooldown and know when it's on cooldown or not so that whenever we call a spell Basically, whenever you cast a spell, you want to call this function to check if it's ready. If it returns true, then cast the spell. If not, don't. And then whenever we actually do cast a spell, we want to call this to put it on cooldown. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, now, if we go back into Unity, we just want a quick way to test this now because that's basically everything. So one way we could test it for now, I guess, is we could... Um, Okay, so I can't actually, um, mm -hmm, I could use another script to put it on cooldown, to be honest. How about we manually put it in just to show it working? So what I'll do is I'll go to cooldown manager and I'll make the um, list public. Obviously in your game, you would do it through other systems, but if we make that public and go to managers, if we just like, for example, put on our fireball, and we just say to fireball, the current cooldown is uh, 10. And we press play. Because it's in the list and it's 10. Oops. Let's just uh, get out of here. As you see, it's counting down 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Done. And it's on exactly 0. Now, if I set it back to 10, right, it's not going to decrement. And the reason's because it got to 0 and it removed it from the list, which is what we wanted. So... One other thing I can quickly do, let's just make it not maximize on play, is I can make the, um, sorry, yeah, I've made the list public, but what we can do is we can make the, um, actually, no, there's nothing else to really put uh, public is there. No, I think that that's basically showing it in action. All you need to do, basically, is you need to have in your code the actual function call that sends it in. This is just the manual way of putting it in. Um, 
so you would have it obviously yeah, you click your spell you basically say if a spell dot um is ready or is spell ready and then obviously if it's true then you do the spell and if it's false then you don't and then when you call the spell you put it on cooldown now obviously just to show that this works for any spell using the uh, same spell class you just go to your managers um like how about we put free there we put a pillar and arcane missiles and just because i have to do it manually i'll put you know 20 there 10 there five there if i go back to the managers and press play i'll quickly show that when the f when the first one's finished it's going to get removed from this list in a few seconds it should get removed yep there we go so that spell finished it's out of the list now and then fireball is going to finish next and that's out of the list and as you see pillar is still counting down seven six five four three two one we go back to the list and it's not in there there's nothing left obviously when i press uh to unpause it because it's a um, changing a script in play mode it reverts when you uh stop playing so you want to only put these in during play mode um through the code rather than manually putting them in with your hand but you see it works so to be honest yeah i hope that works for you i mean it's very easy to take take and change for your game you know if you have an ability system and you want to put stuff on cooldown uh you just have you know put ability on cooldown and you have the class be called ability or spell or whatever you want um but yes, I'm going to quickly bring up the code again. You can have a quick look through it. And then I hope that was good enough for this video. Uh, I think it's a topic that a lot of games will use this thing. So I think it's quite good to know how to do it and have a good method for doing it. It's really neat. You only use like 40 odd lines of code for this. And it's pretty simple. Um, obviously, the actual functionality of it is only about 20 lines long. Uh, this is just for making it static class. So uh, knowing how to make a static class is helpful because you'll have quite a lot if you have managers and this, that, the other in your scene that persist. So that's that. And then we have a list of what's currently on cooldown, like spells. And then obviously for all of them that are in there, we're going to decrement to a zero. When we're at zero, we're going to remove it. So it's off cooldown now. Um, and then obviously this is just to start something on cooldown rather than... So this function is basically what I was doing manually. I was setting the cooldown to the max and adding it to the list. So that's that's all... I was doing manually and you know you can just do it in code and then the spell functions is just for checking and putting it on cooldown so anyway i hope this video is helpful uh, if you haven't already then obviously like and subscribe it mean a lot um just keep up to date with these videos i'm gonna keep doing daily or uh every other day i'm gonna keep doing videos pretty much up until the end of this school year so you know for another however many months uh, i'll try and keep up on it as best as i can with school and other stuff in the meantime um obviously join the discord server if you haven't already uh check out the website all our development uh our github page the link is in our faq channel of the server just you know keep up if you want to um it means a lot all these people that keep joining it's actually it's just good to see that people care and want to learn so as long as you actually do want to learn and not just copy and paste uh i don't like those people but i do like the people who like to learn so that's good if you are one of those but anyway this video uh it's getting on a bit so Stay tuned for more, thanks for watching, and goodbye.